This is my Nebu Starcaster. It's what would happen if an N1 Starfighter and a guitar had a 3D printed baby. It's one of a kind because I designed and built it during COVID-19 lockdown. It's a fully functional guitar, but it has one major problem. got no way to display it. So we're gonna make a stand for it. Like everything I build, I design it first. So then when you actually go to build it, you have a lot less problems. What the design's gonna be is a wooden base. I'll make this out of careful oil. I'll use a bit of SHS and bend it. I'm gonna get a bit of flat bar, bend it as well, and weld it to the SHS at the top. I'm gonna get some flat and then some cuphead bolts and bolt it down to the base. I've cut this bit of camphor laurel, but unfortunately it's got a bit of a twist in it. So I have to sort that out. We've got the section for holding the guitar neck, so we're gonna to have to put some bends in this, drill some holes in that, and then bend this because I really don't care how flat it is and I don't have access to a thicknesser large enough for this we're just gonna use the plane and get it close enough looking a lot flatter now not completely flat but I'm putting five millimeter foam underneath it so any um, little discrepancies that's going to take up the next big issue is uh, cutting it into a circle so I plan to get a bit of scrap ply nail it in the center I'm going to attach my trimmer <laughs> to this and then just spin it around in a circle. And we'll see how we go. I've just realized Two of these don't actually have through holes, so I can only use these two.
It didn't turn out perfect, but pretty damn good. I'm just gonna mark out on the table the approximate shape of this bent bit so that when I bend it, I can sort of get it close. Doesn't have to be perfect, but close enough. Now, I wouldn't normally use this, but it just happens to be 1200 long, and that's the dimension that I want. So. The idea is gonna be, put a couple of nails, uh, in those spots and then I'm just gonna curve that around them add a few extra nails in just to give me an idea of what to bend to RHS is straight. We're gonna to have to bend it to the curve that I've just laid out on the table and we're gonna do that in my hydraulic press because I don't have a pipe bender with square dies for this. Because I'm not using a proper pipe bender I've got to push something down into the steel so I'm just gonna use this chunk that I've got laying around but I'm worried about the sharp edges leaving dints in it so I'm just gonna chuck it on the lathe and machine a bit of a radius on it first. I've just realized the color that I thought was high speed steel, steel is probably just mild steel, so I could use this one instead. It's just gotten rid of that sharp edge. Now we should be right to go. I did do a good, pretty good job of sticking to the line, but the curve on that steel bit did dent into the RHS at some pieces. Up next is the collar to attach the guitar to the actual stand itself. This is gonna be wrapped in some sort of um, material to protect the guitar, but I want it to still be pretty Pretty tight. So we're going to take a couple of lines and bend it in the press brake attachment on my hydraulic press. <laughs> One day I'll upgrade this to a aero hydraulic so I don't have to keep doing this.
this here, but I want to have this at a sort of a bit of an upward angle. So when the guitar sits in it, it sort of falls back in and doesn't fall out. Now we've got the bit of SHS curved and cut to length, it's time to drill some holes in the base plate to accept some cuphead bolts. I'm using cuphead bolts because I've used them on other furniture in the past and um, I like the way that they look and it's all going to sort of match each other. So the next part's just going to be me filing for 10 minutes, so <laughs> I don't think anyone wants to watch that. <laughs> it's come time to weld it together, and like most of you, I'd assume every time you see somebody on YouTube using a stick welder, it infuriates me. It looks like it's the first time that they've welded, and they've got no idea what to do. I've got three different welders. I've got a MIG, TIG and a stick, but I'm going to use my stick today because I don't have any gas for my MIG and I don't want to go and get any and I think the TIG will just take too long. So stick it is. Sheesh, it's still up. Just gonna wrap this in some tape. Stop from damaging the guitar neck. Be wrapped in something nice later. But for now, this will do. I've just drawn this on the table again. So the idea is going to be, I'm gonna put this here. This will be the center of the piece of timber. And so I'm gonna put this here to weld, sit the guitar in the stand and have the dead center of the guitar at that point. Hopefully it'll work out all right. That's taken about 10 minutes for me to get it to sit exactly where I want, but as you can see, it's directly above the point. I realize when I go to change that tape that it's probably going to move, but when I put the final material there, I'm just going to have to adjust it so it sits right in the center on the actual base. Mmm, I love my table. Crispy. Well now I feel a bit stupid. After going on and on about welding, I just realized that I was welding in the wrong direction and that's why they were turning out so terrible. Just marking out where the, the plate's gotta go. I simply don't trust myself to be able to build these straight any other way, so we're back over here at the mill drill.
just realized if I'm gonna tighten those nuts with anything other than a socket, it's not gonna fit. So I'm just gonna mail it out of pocket instead. Because I spent all that time making a pocket, I'm gonna tighten it with a socket. I'm not gonna lie, it's actually turned out a bit better than I expected. I didn't think it was gonna be as stable as it is. And if you put, take it out and then put it in, it just stays there. I thought I was gonna to have to retain the neck somehow. I'm gonna pull it apart and paint it and also finish the timber and fill the holes probably with epoxy so that it doesn't warp anymore over time. And that's what we'll do next. Well, I thought I just recorded myself while I'm rushing it down and giving it a clean, but apparently I didn't. <laughs> so I'm just going to give it a coat of this Hammertone black paint. I've used this on machine stands and our dining room table before. So I just like the, the Hammertone finish. I just brush it on nice and easy and it goes pretty well. I've only got a teensy little bit left, so be enough for one coat tonight, and then I'll go pick up some more tomorrow when it's dry. I've wrapped a neck holder in this double-sided tape, which is a bit of foam, which gives it the cushion. And then I've taken this wire loom tape and then wrapped it around. As you can see, the cushion's underneath and gives it a bit of a spring. super happy with how it's turned out. I've hoped you've enjoyed coming along with for the ride with me and this has been my first YouTube video and hopefully I'll catch you on the next one.